Say hello to Chad the Mad. Many years ago, people believed the sun was made of burning coal. Chad and I had a little chat in the comment section of his videos a while back. See if you can understand why. However, this idea was rejected because burning coal couldn't have lasted more than 5,000 years. In the 19th century, a German scientist named Himmholtz suggested that the sun's energy was produced because it was shrinking. But since many scientists had already begun to believe that the Earth was billions of years old, they wouldn't accept this explanation. Instead, they suggested that the Sun was a huge nuclear reactor, producing energy by turning hydrogen into helium through a process called nuclear fusion. If this really happened, said the Sun, there should be trillions of tiny subatomic particles called neutrinos racing away from the Sun and through the Earth. Special equipment was set up to measure these neutrinos, but hardly any were found. So scientists who believe in the nuclear fusion theory are puzzled. Of course, no one has ever been inside the sun, so we cannot really know what's going on there. So Himmholtz's theory of the shrinking sun may be right after all, which would mean the world is much younger than most people think it is. Now Chad has since removed the videos he made on creationism, and is researching his position further. But before he did so, he issued forth a challenge to try and experiment upon the sun and not melt. Well, I set about making a little toy to do just that. With a broken CD, a cardboard tube, some opaque materials and a fair bit of tape, I made this, a crude spectroscope. It isn't much to look at. But more advanced versions of this sort of device have unlocked so much by way of the mysteries of the universe, it is odd that more people don't recognise their importance to us. Spectrometers can tell us what something is made of, and that something can be in the room with us, or billions of miles across space. Spectrometers give us the proof the universe is expanding, and they helped us understand the structure of the atom. A spectroscope, or spectrometer, passes light, or other EM radiation, from a source, either through a prism or a diffraction grating, and break it up into its constituent colours or wavelengths. Depending on the elements or chemicals present in the light source, or in some cases between the light source and the prism, patterns are seen in the spectrum produced. This is just the same principle that works to produce rainbows and was investigated by Newton centuries ago. Now you may ask, what produces these patterns? Well, it's all to do with electrons. In a simple model of an atom, the electrons are thought of as orbiting the nucleus, much like planets orbiting a star. Unlike planets, electrons can only exist in these set orbits, but are able to jump between them if the conditions are right. If an electron is given enough energy, it can jump to one of the further out orbitals. From the outer orbitals, an electron may also jump to a lower orbital, in doing so giving out energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Just in case, let's make one more analogy. I will act as the electron, and the rocks and the beach as the orbitals. I can climb up onto this rock with a small amount of energy, just as an electron moving to a higher energy orbital will require energy to do so. When I jump off and back to the beach, there is a thud, and sand granules are moved. I have given out the same amount of energy as it took to climb up onto the rock. When an electron drops to a lower energy orbital, it also gives out energy, but not as sound instead as light or EM radiation. Now, if I climb onto a bigger rock, or for our electron, an even higher energy orbital, then it takes more energy. If I jump off, a louder thud is heard when I hit the sand. When the electron transits to the lower orbital, it gives out more energy, producing a different wavelength of EM radiation, or colour. Okay, so how do we use that to tell what something is made of? 
Well, in short, the colours of light, or wavelengths, given by an element are unique. The sun produces a near-continuous spectra of visible light, as you would see in a rainbow. This is as would be predicted. However, my spectroscope cannot see the parts where the spectra pauses, known as absorption lines. These black lines represent where energy is taken in by electrons to move up in energy levels. Analogous to me climbing up onto the rock. This is also able to be used to identify elements. Now my homemade spectroscope is okay, and a fair bit of fun. But I know that better can be done. So here is what I propose. Make your own spectroscope, and produce a video with pictures of the spectra you get as a response to this video. I will give shoutouts to those who produce the best entries. Rules are simple. You are not allowed to use a professionally built spectrometer or spectroscope, or any parts from them. Pictures of your spectroscope need to be included, as well as any spectra you produce. Yes, decoration counts, and yes, your children can enter. You will have until one month from the time of this video being posted to get your entries in. Any entries after this time will be accepted as video responses, but not as part of the competition. If anyone manages to produce a spectroscope capable of resolving absorption lines in a solar spectrum, then they will have their video featured on this channel as a bonus prize. Instructions on how I built my spectroscope are in the description, and very simple. There are also a few links to other designs. I'm looking forward to watching your entries, and encourage everyone to take part. Mm -hmm.